the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us go before God. Bring our hearts under our knee at this time. Bring it down very low, low, low. Low as possible. And let us go before God sincerely. With this word of God, let us go before him. And ask him to forgive us for all our sins. All the things that we know of and things that we don't know. Let us ask God at this time. Talk to God at this time. We believe that faith in God is meaning and purpose in human life. That the brotherhood of man transcends the sovereignty of nations. And that economic justice can best be won by free men through freedom to Christ. And that government should be of laws rather than of men. And that earth's greatest treasure lies in human personality. And that service to humanity is the best work of our life. The Lord reign. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the earth be glad thereof. So sing a new song unto the Lord, all the earth. Come before his presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise unto him with all of our hearts, hands, and voices. Blessed be the Lord of our strength, with reaching out our hands to war and our freedoms to fight. Therefore, we will exalt thee, O my God and King, and we will bless thy name forever. For God so loved the world that he is the only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, everlasting life shall be given unto them. Therefore, praise the Lord.
awesome blended.
to hear somebody pray.
everything going to be all right. At this time, brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are about to bring Marion Strayer coming with Psalms 139, verse 14.
Sometimes we are down in the pit, Amen. but God is there to lift us up. A day like come to today, brothers and sisters. Let us give our hands to Jesus. Because no other help we know. No other help but Jesus. So we talk to Jesus today. Oh, 
the foundation lesson again will be taken from Esther 4 verses 15 to 16. Then Esther bade them return. Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go unto the king which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Here ends the portion of the scripture. My sword and my blood.
mai aici afară, părintele Marnică, The dictionary tells me that the word risk is an action that exposes you to the possibility of loss, injury, or death. Taking that chance not knowing what the outcome will be. Yeah. However, I personally think the word risk is difficult to define because the assessment of risk depends on our individual experiences. Yes. What one person may consider to be risky may be riskless to another yes. person. Yes. The level of risk taken varies depending on our evaluation of our needs and circumstances. You may be more open to taking risks when you desperately need to change a situation. For example, in the book of Esther, we read about Queen Esther who placed her faith in God and approached the king to ask to save the Jews. She fasted and asked others to fast with her for three days as she prepared to take a risky action by appearing before the king without yes. his summons. But sometimes we have to step out of our comfort zone yes. and do what we need to do, just trusting in God. So Queen Esther said, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. I know you heard this story many times, but I just need to say to you, Queen Esther did not care what happens to her. She had a goal, and that goal was asking the king to save the Jews. Even if it meant that she would die, how many of us has this courage? Brothers and sisters in Christ, her courage brought blessings to the Jews because she took a risk, and the king granted her request. Risk taken demands courage. I will tell you today that as you feel the pain and consequences of a risk you took in faith, God promised that we will never face those situations alone. He promised to be with us through it all. In Kings 2, verse 7 through 16, this is another story in the Bible of four leopards who stood at the entrance gate to their city. They foresaw death by salvation. And if they enter into the city, they also expected to die. So with little or no choice in their situation, they took the risk of surrendering at their enemy's camp, who would either spare their lives or kill them. Many of us could identify with this. Brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes in some situations, we have no choice but to take that risk. But I want to tell you that the God we serve promised to never leave us or forsake us. So in situations like this, we just have to put the situation in his hands and let go. We see that the four lepers entered into the Syrians' camp. They said that we go over to the camp. Let us go over to the camp. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. They made up their minds and took a risk only to find out what, that there was no risk. The Syrians had abandoned their tents, horses, and bad weathers. The Lord had made the approach of the four lepers to sound like a large army approaching the Syrian camp. Here we see the four lepers took a risk and their decision blessed them and their city because they informed their king of their findings. Sometimes procrastination and fear gets in our word. way yes. when there is a difficult situation at hand. But the lesson I have learned in life is that we cannot avoid risk even if we want to. Mm -hmm. And my advice to you is, if there are opportunities that appear risky to you today, lay them down before the Lord in prayer and act according to his leading. Thank you for your listening. Oh Come convert it, shine on me.
of Haman, son of Hamadatha, the, Aga, the Agagai, who was the enemy of the Jews. Chapter 3, verse 13, talks of letter that was sent by post into all the king's province to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, all in one day. Esther chapter 4, verse 11 states that all of the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king's inner court, who is not called there, is, is a law of his to put to death. What this is saying, church, is that unless someone be called by the king to come before him, no one can go before him. This is a risk that Esther took. She knew she was not supposed to be, she knew she was not supposed to, but she did it anyway. Furthermore, Esther in chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, on the third day, put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. And when the king saw Esther standing in the court, she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out his golden scepter. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. But the king, holding out his scepter, at that moment, church, and Esther touching it meant that he gave her the privilege to speak instead of death. With this, Esther was able to save her people. Esther took a risk and it paid off. I believe, church, that risk and faith go hand in hand. Amen. When you take a risk, you are doing it by faith because you do not know what the ultimate outcome will be. By and with faith, risk becomes easy. Every day, you and I take risk. We travel on the train, it's a risk. We take an airplane, it's a risk. We go on cruises in the wide ocean, it's a risk. We eat from people we do not know, it's a risk. We walk down the road without knowing the outcome, it's a risk. 
Life is inherently risky. There is one big risk you should avoid at all costs, church, and that is the risk of doing nothing. Every step we take in life is a risk, but not riskless. God bless.
And I'm now going to bring Teacher Laura. Yeah. In no other name but in Jesus' almighty name. She loves singing. She loves the world. But I love my sister. Teacher Laura. In no other name but in Jesus' Yeah. If there's a Y chromosome, 
chromosome, you know you are making a boy. And if there is an X chromosome, you know that you are making a girl. Right. I'm talking about life. Yes. Right. Risky, but not risky. Yes. Yes. Then I looked at life, and I understand that life in itself is a risk. So then I peruse the book of Jeremiah. And I understand that when God wanted to use Baruch, he did something dramatic to Baruch. Yeah. And the Bible says that God said to Baruch, but I will give you life. Yeah. And the life I will give to you, Baruch, is as a price. Yeah. Behind. Behind. As well as in all places, you go, you are going at a risk. Yeah. But in going at a risk, I am your God. Yeah. And because I am your God, you will operate riskless. Because I am yeah. your God. Right Where you will go, it will be a risk yeah. you are taking. Yeah. But I am your God, so it will become a riskless. Yeah. So then I go further. And it says that if you want God's best for your life, and you desire to be used by God, at some point, you will have to travel a road where risk element yes. is inevitable. Yes. Because life is a risk yes. in itself. Right that means that God's purpose for risk cannot be bad. And yet, sadly, many of us allow our risk element to become major point of setback and defeat in our lives. Go ahead. Yes. I hope that none of us Profound. fall in that category. Go ahead. Risk shows up where we stand in our faith. What do you think God has in mind when he allows us to take risk? The result is church. God wants us to accomplish several goals in our lives by allowing us to take risks yeah. that are not riskless, but only to take risks. Then I look at some risks yeah. that are not riskless, and I look at get God allow us to fall into risks that are not riskless because He wants to get our attention. Yeah. Yeah. Then I see that He wants to deliver us from pride, so he puts us into risk, yeah. but it's not riskless. Yeah. Then he wants to reveal our weaknesses and our strengths, so he puts us at risk. Yeah. Yeah. Right he wants to increase our hatred of sin, so he puts us at risk. Yeah. Yes. He wants to remove pride and self-centeredness, right so he puts us at risk. Yes. Yeah. He wants to prepare us for future services, so he puts us at risk. Do all the levels, church, of risk. We have to understand that God is molding us into a mature person. Amen. We have to understand, church, that a risk is God's choice tool for building godly spiritual character in our lives. Look at the book of Esther. He uses Esther at high risk. Yeah. to intercede for the Israelite. Yeah. God often uses a riskless spirit to get a person's attention. Yeah. So he uses Esther because Esther has a, a riskless spirit. Yeah. So that God frequently uses a persistent risklessness to direct us. This type of risklessness originates in the deepest aspects of a person being and persistent over the time. When you have that feeling, what you need to do is to stop and ask God, what is it? What is it you're trying to say to me? Should I be risky but not riskless? Or should I be risky and riskless at the same time? The answer is no. What you need to do is to sit. Sit at the feet of Jesus, yes, sir. as Esther sat, not at the feet.
feet of Jesus for sale. But she sat at the feet of an uncle yes. that was a Jesus to her. Amen. So that she could have understand that. I want to do this for my people. Yes. But I need an intercessor. So that I could go in. And she understood that the intercessor was not an uncle. But she knew that the intercessor was the God of Israel. So she said, God, I'm going to go in there. Yes. If I perish, I take any risk. Yes, yes, God, what me? Yes. If I perish, yes. I perish. Yes, sir. But I must go into the king. Yes, yes. Because I need to intercede yes. for my people. Yes. Risky, yes. but not to riskless. Yes. And Esther did that. Yeah. Go ahead. Anytime you take a risk for God, mm. you will need a courage. Mm? Yes, sir. You will need someone to encourage you. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Anytime you want to take yes. a risk for God. Yes. Let's look at Job. Mm. Like God and Job. Jesus flipped the script on the devil. Yes. Mm? Yes. The devil wanted to complain about you. No, if you think, Lord. Do you think I'm making a joke? Yeah. I want to interfere with that son. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. So he allowed him. Yes, sir. Yes. Not to speak. Yes, sir. My God. Because Job was not riskful enough. Yes. So Jesus spoke. Yes. Oh, God spoke. Can God say? Do what you want. Just do what you want. Yes. But do what you want. Do what you want. Yes, sir. I'm yes. taking a risk. Go ahead. Do what you want. Yes. Move it. Go ahead. Move it. Yes. yes. I'm risking that boy to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. In the family. Yes. Do what you want with him. Yes, sir. And then Job in himself understand. Well, what is happening here? Job realized that he was living by the Nile River. Yes. And he was maybe. He was in uh, the form of denial because of where he was living. So Job just stood because he was riskful. Yeah. And he stood. And the devil killed out things. Yes. Yes. Kill him. Yes. He killed him, killed him, killed him, killed him, do everything. Step in. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. But Job, yes, sir. in certainty, of who he is in Christ. Yes, Hallelujah. Job stood the test of time. Praise the Lord. Yes. And he stood here like a mock of Yes. Mm -hmm. right. And he didn't say a word. That's he stood as a book of Isaiah said. Yes. He stood as a lamb to the shame. Yes. yes. And he opened not his mouth. Yes. He was another Jesus. Yes. In the Old Testament time. Yes. And Job said nothing. Nothing, but everything was taken yeah. from Job. Yes. God took the risk mm. of allowing that to happen to Job. Yes. Yes. And Job did not let go of them. The wife said to him, mm. Foolish man. Go ahead. You're so stupid. Sure yes. yes. Foolish man. Go ahead. Come now. Mm. You lose children. Yes. yes. Stop. It was so hard in conception. Yes. And you allowed the God that you say you love yes. to take them away. Mm -hmm. We unemployed. Yes, sir. And we used to depend on the animals. Yes. All that are gone. I have it. Go ahead, Richard. And you still risking the God. Yes. Sir. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And the Bible says that Job opened him up this time. Oh. And he said, Woman, yes. you speak. Ooh. Yes. Yes, sir. God took the risk. Yes. Yes, sir. Knowing that Job was a man of flesh. Yes. But Job stood the test of time. Yes. And Job stood in the risk element. Yes, sir. And he did not allow God to feel embarrassed. Yes. And God, in the end of the risk element, he gave him. Yes. More yes. than he had before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, I combined to say to us when you learn to stand at the risk element, yeah. God will bank up heaven for the people of God. Yeah. I said to you, church, God will bank up heaven for the church. Yeah. If you know 
call to stand in the risk element and on the scorch by the fire. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Then I look at Joshua. Oh, yes, sir. Then I love that Joshua understood yeah. the risk element of taking risk. Yes. So what Joshua did? The Lord challenged Joshua. Come on. On a mission. Come on. Come on. And said to Joshua, go and get a multitude of Israelites. Yeah. And carry them across the Jordan. Yes. Church, life was involved in going across the Jordan. Yes, sir. A risk element yes. risk. was involved in going across the Jordan. Yes. But Joshua took the risk yes. of taking them yes. across the Jordan. Yes, sir. So that when they reach, they may claim the promise. Well, Life you. is yes. risky, yes, but not riskless. Yes, sir. So before Joshua sent the people across oh. the river, the Lord said to Joshua three times, Yes, sir. Have courage. Yes, sir. Yes. Not, not. Remember the promise yes, sir. that we made. Yeah. Remember it was a promise yeah. to your forefathers. Yeah. He was reminding him that even though it's a risk, yes. you must obey Why the not? law of Moses. Yes, sir. And Joshua did. Yes. Just as he was yes. commanded. Hallelujah. Church in, in, in life. Yes. We take many risks. Yes. Yes, if you do something at your own risk, you are responsible for any harm or damage yes. that you suffer as a result of the risk that we take. All of us take risk. Yes, sir. In life, we run risk. Yes. That is to be in a situation in which something bad could happen. Yes. Church, we will want to open a business yes. anticipating a surplus. Yes. Yes. But we don't know if there's going to be a surplus or a deficit. Hallelujah. Yes. But we still run the risk yes. of going into Hallelujah. a business. Why? Yes. Because in opening a business there's life yes. that is involved. Life risky or not. Yes, sir. Church, we take risk. Yes, why well, have you? We do something. Although we know that something is unpleasant yes. or dangerous could happen. Yes. Such as wanting to be a leader. <laughs> yes. Do you want to be a leader to run from life? That's why a risk know. element. Yes, sir. Why? It's a risk element why? Because this is life. Therefore, you will be taking a risk yes. Yes. if you want to be an elder or a leader at Plum Because the Titanic is risky. Yes. There may be an iceberg ahead. Yes. So it's a risk in traveling on the ship. Yes. Church, if people never die, the world will not be hot. Yes. Well, yes. For according to the natural law of increase, the number will be absolutely appalling. Life should be regarded socially as a banquet to which many guests are invited. Go ahead. And where there are many sittings, the first take their place and having finished, make room for other relays yes. until are served. Yeah. If we were here forever, the first comers to the banquet will gain, and all the late comers, like you and I, nothing. Yes, sir. We will have nothing. I look at Joseph Campbell, a writer in the 16th century, and he said that life has no meaning. Then I read further. In his writing, and he said, Each of us has meaning, <laughs> and we bring it to life. Okay. okay. It makes no sense you ask the question if life has meaning when you are the answer. Yes. 
Yes, sir. Church, we will never live if you are looking for the meaning of life. Yeah. Then I looked at another writer, and Edgar Allan Poe said, The best thing in life means you're sweaty. Then I looked and I said, What is Allan Poe saying to the church? <laughs> And I look at the, the theme for today, life risky but not riskless, then I was able to understand that Alan Poole was talking about life. Because life that is prior or life that is first, because he was saying that there's a life now yeah. and there's life thereafter. Which one of the life would we look at risk? And not riskless, which one of the life are we looking at? And then I, I, I peruse further and he said that life is problems, but living is solving the problem. So I understood clearly there that he was saying to us that life in itself is a problem. Yes, sir. But if we know how to solve the problem, we can live life. Amen. And we will not have to hustle about what is the meaning of life. We will know that. If we know how to live life, we will know that in living, we could solve a problem. In one of our class at the um, Defenders of the Faith, we were, we were taught about the meaning of life. And as I started writing, I said, oh, but we, we did this topic already. And then I was able to go into Henry Miller's mind and, and look at what Henry Miller said. Henry Miller says, that life has to be given a meaning because of the obvious fact it has a meaning. So to life, life has meaning. Some author may say that life does not have meaning, but when you are in the church of God, life has meaning. But if you are not in Christ, life have no meaning. Yeah. You don't want to commit suicide because life has no meaning. But when you're in the church of God, yeah. life is a fact yeah. and it has meaning. Church in my coming down. There is no coincidence. There is no coincidence, church, in life. The purpose of life is to stay alive. Let me say that again. There is no coincidence. Some of us take up life, which is a risk element, yeah. blindly. And that because we go into it blindly, there are going to be some firefighters that will put your fire out. Because there's no meaning to your life. Because you go into life or you go into a living blindly. But if you go into living with your eyes wide open, yeah. you will understand that life has meaning. It will be risky, but it will not be riskless. I hope that all the risk that we took in life, I hope that all the risk that we took in 2014, I hope that all the risk elements that faces us in 2014, we will be able to say as the theme, life is risky, yes, sir. but it's not riskless. So that all the risk that we took, we will find solace in all the risk that we took. Why? Because we did not go in to our risk blindly. Yes, sir. We go with our eyes widely open because we want to, to take a chance. And everything we do church, we are taking chances. But it is only because of the goodness of God yes. that our chances will become successful. Yes. Life is a game. Life is a stage. Yes. We are the actors. 
And we are the actresses. And if life is a stage, let us take the risk. Take the risk. And remember, after the risk, the victory could come. Yes, sir. Remember that after the risk, something good may come out of our riskness. I hope that when we take the risk, remember that at the end of the risk, there's going to be a reward. So that after your risk taking, the end of it will be a reward. I hope that our risk will take us to our reward. And learn and understand that whatever we sow, yes, that's what we gotta reap. Our sowing is our risking, and our reaping is our reward. God bless you in Jesus' name.
hope from his heart. The quartet, the male choir, that sing until the sweat here today.